Joining us now in Studio B is another man we're excited to have on the program, Mike Littlewood, head baseball coach of the ranked BYU Cougars, depending on which poll you look at. They're ranked in a few of them. But, Coach, before we, we get to all those numerics and all that important stuff that actually deals with baseball, <laughs> um, we I know you gave us your reaction on our first our collective first pitches yeah. last Friday, but I, BYU Sports Nation hasn't had a chance to hear from you on this desk. What do you think and of our first awesome pitches? We it, it wasn't it wasn't bad, but I did lose a little <laughs> sleep over it, especially watching you guys warm up in front. So I dug through the archives and I came up with this instructional video for you. And I don't know if you want to read that. <laughs> Baseball 101, throwing mechanics more important than you think. <laughs> so if you just want to look over that a little bit, and I'd be hap happy to work with you guys. If you come down to the field, we, we can get that going. So On better than Tom Amansky. Here we go. What happened with Tom Amansky? Tom Amansky videos. Oh, uh, instructional yeah, you, you videos. Yeah. yeah. Fred McGriff. Okay. Yeah. What, what I realized with this is that I am way, un, I am way less athletic than I thought. Like, like I used to think I had a normal pitching motion, and then you see yourself in film and you go, oh, my goodness. We all think we're better than we are, but you got to get a little more, bit more on the backside, yes, Jerem. Yes, yeah. thank Spencer, you. Spencer gets it back there a little yeah. bit. Yeah, was hey, my, are my mechanics so yeah. abominable, Mike? No. They're okay. Yeah, they're he okay. He handed this to me, not you. <laughs> <laughs> I, message loud uh, received loud and clear. Uh, th I, we, we appreciate you guys doing that. It was awesome. It was a good day. That was, yeah, that was very fun. Ralph Sobel joked with me, the uh, sports information director for BYU Baseball, and said, you threw out the first pitches and they lost. So it's, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's true. I wish we could blame it on that, but <laughs> there's some other things that I won't talk about today. Is it a, a – you're 20 and 3, so anytime you lose, it's like, whoa, what happened? Because it's happened so few times. Is it, is it a shock to the system, to you like it is to us? You know, not really. I mean, we look at every game the same. We, we really do. And now that we're in league play, we understand that it's going to be – you know, last year we played Nebraska, Oklahoma, Santa Barbara, and, and uh, those teams were – when we got into league play, there was no surprises whatsoever. And this year we played Sanford and Kansas and really good teams, but – I think as we move into league play, it's kind of the same and, and maybe even seeing a little bit better pitching in league, just one, one through three, the starters. And so um, it, it doesn't it doesn't really – our record doesn't really concern me. In league, the record means something because the top four teams get in the tournament. That's, that's all that we care about right now. We want to win the league, um, secondarily get in the tournament and get to a regional. Those are our goals. And, and um, you know, so a loss here or there doesn't matter as long as we're winning series, winning the games we're supposed to win. Currently tied for first place in WCC play with a four and two record after winning two of three in the opening two series of West Coast Conference play. But now you're throwing a curveball with the news that Kyle Dean is going to miss six weeks. He's been, you know, a fantastic freshman and has brought a lot to the program. Jason Shepard reporting that it is a stress reaction, and that's what happens prior to a stress fracture. So this is a precautionary move. Again, he's out six weeks. What went into that decision, and, and what was that conversation like with Kyle? Well, I mean, it's been an ongoing conversation with, with the training staff and myself and Kyle and trying to figure out really what it was, you know. Um, but I let all those decisions be handled by the, the, our medical team. Alex Davis, our head trainer, Dr. Rich, um, our, our team doctor, and whatever they say goes. And so when they say six weeks, I don't say, well, what about three? You know, what about two? You know, I, I, I just I stay out of that and let the professionals do their job and, and try to not, not stick my nose where it doesn't belong. And so... When they say six weeks, it's six weeks. And then I met with Kyle and said, hey, this is a plan. Met with him yesterday morning and said, this is our plan. Um, right now, he's gonna wa he wants to go see a nutritionist because he's a little bit nervous. If he's not lifting, not doing anything, that he's going to get heavy. And I'm like, OK, you'll probably still burn some calories. You're 18 years old. But, uh, <laughs> and then and he's going to concentrate on his grades. And, and really kind of just, he's a, he's a mature kid. I mean, when I say that, he's, he's so much more mature than his 19 years uh, that he's been here. I mean, it's it's amazing to, and that it carries over to his his baseball just acumen and everything about him is just exudes maturity. And so, hey, it's just one of those things that happens in athletics. We have to move on. Mike, the nice thing is last year you had an injury to a significant player in the outfield, Eric Urey, and it kind of hurt the team at yeah. the end. Yet this team, you got Keaton Kringlin and Brock Hale who have seemed to step up in his yeah, place. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, Brock Hale was in there at first, and then Brock has a little bit of a arm issue that he's just coming off of. And so we, we try to play him, not, not have him take infield, and, and then pretty soon Pacific sort of thinking, hey, he can't, not throwing really like he, like he should. And so then we made the switch to Keaton Kringlin, who stepped in and took, I mean, it's all about opportunity and taking, you know, just taking advantage of that opportunity. Brock did it. Keaton's done it now. And, man, thankful for the team. I mean, they, you know, as far as the team goes, because those guys are trying to fill big shoes with Kyle, and, and uh, they've, they've done 
great at it. I mean, it's, it's been awesome. So aside from Kyle Dean and having to kind of, you know, shift things around in right field with the starting lineup of a team that is 20 and three, what would you say that is your, is your number one concern right now moving forward with the current status of BYU baseball? Um, just really getting our starting pitching settled. We know Mike Rucker is going to be our first starter. Um, Maverick Buffalo has been our number two starter, but, you know, he had a really, to be honest, a horrible outing last time and, and, a, and a bad outing against Niagara. Um, I had a long conversation with him after his outing and talking about some different things, and he'll be back in there this week as number two starter. And then Connor Williams, you know, it's, uh, uh, he's got big-time stuff. Um, his, his ceiling is so high. I mean, he could be in the big leagues, really, with his stuff but he's just got to throw strikes. He threw three innings, 68 pitches on, on Saturday, which is a really high pitch count. Um, and, and so we're hoping to get him four or five innings, but he did, I mean, if we could have scripted that game, that, that's exactly how we would have done it. He throws three, cut the game down to turn it into a six inning game with Hayden Rogers and Easton Walker and, and Mason Marshall left in the pen. It worked out perfect, but it's kind of like, it's kind of like playing with fire a little bit. Instead of having three solid starters, you know they're gonna go six, seven, eight innings. Um, that's probably my biggest concern right now. We've buried the lead here. I want to talk about uh, m maybe an issue on the team of, of real concern is performance enhancers. Have, are there guys <laughs> using dye on their mustache? You know, you probably saw Daniel Schneeman, his burn marks, and so that's probably where you, that's probably where you got that from. Yeah, some guys need those performance enhancing uh, mustache dyes, but... Um, so Daniel, I, he's a freshman, and uh, I don't think it was coming in like he wanted it to. So we tried some dye and oh. ends up getting burnt, and so he had to shave it, and so now he's got some burn marks. So he's got a he's got a red mustache, um, oh. but it, it'll probably be blister mustache in a couple oh. days. But who has the worst mustache on the team? Um, you know, some people say the worst or best is Coach Pratt. Um, I don't. How is it? Have the you worst? seen? That's have you? That yeah, thing so is amazing. Some Shit. people say worse. Some people say best. It's just it's about our it's like our anthracite uniform. Some people hate them. Some people love them. So <laughs> anthracite. I yeah, love that and name. I would say Keaton Kringlin probably, to me, probably has the worst. I mean, people like his, but <laughs> there's the real answer. You know, it's yeah. So that's pretty ugly. Um, but they're all pretty ugly, so they're on the same boat. <laughs> I like I like after a big base hit at a critical time or whatever. Now the su the signal from the base <laughs> yeah. pass has been like yeah. to smooth the mustache yeah. out. I'll tell you what, it seems like a small thing, but it's been a great team builder. And honestly, uh, people ask me, why don't you have one? And, and here's the real truth. I mean, the co head coach is always the last to know. I mean, it's like after the after we won three or four games down in Vegas, and then we go down to Sanford and win a game, and like everybody's kind of got some, like a, a five o'clock shadow some above. Whiskers. I'm like, what's going on? Oh yeah, we're mustache. Oh, okay, thanks for letting me in on it. Yeah. So I can't go back <laughs> now and, and try to start doing you it. You gotta it would, go from I the would beginning. Jinx it. Yeah, I would jinx it, so. I'm good. And there's that superstition. There we go. In, right? Exactly. It's baseball. It's when, baseball. When we went to throw the first pitches, I was so careful not to touch the <laughs> third baseline. I was like, yeah. like exaggerated the move. Well, here's yeah. how far that goes. So I've got I've got this Apple Watch that I always wear, and then but I wear a, my just Timex for out on the field, and you know it's got a stopwatch and everything. And I had this on Saturday, and I sprinted back because I I don't want to change watches right now. I don't want to change anything while we're going so well. So I sprint back. I mean, it's like two minutes before the game. Sprint back into my locker, get my other watch, put it on. And, I mean, those are those are the stupid things we think about. So, so you use the Timex yeah. watch on the field. Absolutely, yeah. You, you can't have, change it up. Yeah. You can't okay. change it up. Yeah. <laughs> I love it Baseball so much. Baseball is the most superstitious. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah it's pretty stupid. Headed back out on the road after a nice lengthy home stand. It was, I'm sure, wonderful to be in your, your bed at home and not have to do a ton of traveling. But now back out on the road in WCC play against Portland. What do the pilots bring to the table in terms of competition? Well, they have a new they have a new coach. They're 13 and 11 right now. They play they play uh, Seattle tonight, so it could be 13 12, could be 14 11. Who knows? But they're they're a much better team. Last year they didn't play with any confidence. They had you know they were they were pretty selfish at bats and kind of just going out there to just to play the game. And their coach really wasn't into it. I mean, he was disengaged. It seemed like they've got a new coach who came from from a D3 school who's really energized them. Uh, they're, they're playing really well, and they're playing with confidence. They've got 70 in 20, the 22 games, 23 games. They've got t over 70 stolen base attempts. They're going to really run. Hmm. Now, they only have 40-something you know, success uh, successes, but th that percentage isn't great. But still, they're going to put the pressure on and run. Their starting pitcher is great. Um, he's going to be a lot like the three pitchers we saw at LMU, throwing strikes, upper 80s. Um, you know, he's, he's facing Rucker, though. So that's nice from our standpoint. That, uh, that we always have a chance with Mike going out there. One nice thing is we play, you know, the, it, I think the word's out that we want, we want to try to get a, a, a turf field or at least a different surface. Our, our surface 
at Miller Park isn't great, whether it's natural grass or, or turf, but they've got a brand new turf field up there this second mm -hmm. year. So I'm, I'm looking forward to going playing on that and kind of see what that's like, because that might be the, the prototype that we, we want to fashion our field after. So that's going to be kind of fun as well. Head coach of BYU Baseball, Mike Littlewood in Studio B, we appreciate the gift. Baseball 101. Do we? Throwing mechanics <laughs> more important than you think. Yeah. Fundamentals. I don't need fundamentals. Yeah. I need fun. Let's break it down. We'll do our homework, and specifically I'll make sure Jerem does his homework. There we go. Oh.